Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I will show you how you can install Hyperland and Qtile with my dot files in the version 2.7.1 on your computer. The foundation will be a basic Arch Linux installation with the minimal profile. That means only the fundamental packages of Arch Linux will be installed in the first step and in the second step we will install then Hyperland and Qtile and all the rest of the required packages on top on Arch Linux. This installation is a kind of a reference installation for my dot files. I will install my dot files in a virtual machine based on QEMU. This is a great environment for testing, but of course you can do exactly the same steps to install my dot files on real hardware. The dot files 2.7.1 are available on my GitLab repository. Also on this page you can find a detailed description about all steps to install these dot files on your computer based on an Arch Linux distribution. You can find all links in the video description below. And with that let's jump in. I'm setting up my dot files in the virtual machine for this demonstration. I click here on plus on QEMU. I choose local install media forward i select here in my downloads folder the arch linux iso that i have just downloaded arch linux is automatically detected forward i define here 8 gigs 12 cpu for my system 20 gigabytes for the demonstration is absolutely enough i customize the installation before the start. First of all, I select UEFI as a firmware. I click on apply. Then in boot options, I select the CD-ROM, bring this to the first position. In video vid IO, I will start with QXL and the rest is fine. And we can begin the installation of Arch Linux. If you have created a bootable USB stick, then you start with that. The system is booting up now and we are here in the Arch Linux welcome screen. First step, I need to set my keyboard layout with Lord Keys DE Latin 1. Now I have access to the German keyboard layout and then I can already start Arch install. If you're running your system with wireless network, um, then please start IWCTL utility and set up your connection to the internet. This is Arch install. Arch install language English is fine. Mirrors. I select the mirror region Germany. Germany is selected. I can go back. Locales. The keyboard layout for my installation is Again, DE Latin 1. REST is fine. Local language is fine. Local encoding is fine. Disk configuration. I use the best effort default partition layout. I will use the whole disk, the 21 gigabytes. I will use ButterFS as a file system. The sub volumes, um, I will install the sub volumes with the default structure. Yes, and compression on. Disk, encrypt, disk encryption is not needed. Bootloader system deboot is fine. Unified kernel images is fine. Swap true is fine. Host name is fine. Root password. I define a root password and I will add a user account. I add a user, define a username, a password. And yes, the new user should be a super user. Oh. I confirm and exit. Now we come to the profile. I select type and in the first step I select the minimal profile. So only a fundamental Arch Linux system will be installed. And back. Audio will be Pipewire. Kernel Linux is fine. Additional packages to install the dot files, we will need git. So enter git here. 
network configuration. I will copy the existing network configuration into the new installation. This is super straightforward. And the time zone in my case is Berlin. And that's it for the configuration and we can start the installation now. I press enter to continue. This will take now a few minutes and you see the download of the packages has already started. There's nothing more to do. Everything will now be installed automatically in a background. And after that, you have a full running minimal Arch Linux installation on your computer. Now I can exit the setup here with no, and we can reboot. Important is that you now remove your installation media. Let's test the new Arch Linux installation after the reboot. Yeah, it seems to work. That's great. And also my keyboard layout has been set up correctly. Let's shut down the system for a second. And this step is only required for virtual machine users with QEMU because now I have to enable 3D acceleration. To do this, I need to select here virtio, 3D acceleration, apply. And in display spice, I select here in listen type none and I activate open GL and I select my main GPU. I click on apply. I can remove now the CD-ROM. This is not required anymore and I can start the system. Let's go back to full screen. Let's log in. And now we are ready to install the dot files for Hyperland and Qtile. First step is we need to create a folder, mkdir downloads. I cd into the downloads folder and I can download now my dot files. Git is already installed in the first step, means we can use git clone. https gitlab.com slash stefan hyphen rabe slash dot files dot git. Now the download has started. Yeah, download is complete and we can now CD into the dot .files folder. And the dot .files folder includes an installation script, install.sh, you see it here in green. And with dot slash install dot .sh, we can start the installation script. I have to enter my sudo password. Some first packages will be installed immediately because they are required to run the installation. Do you want to start the installation now? Yes, of course I want to do this. Now the installation script will install yay to get access to the Arch user repository. There are several packages included that we need for our installation. And we confirm the installation of yay with yes. Yay is now installed. The script has detected an existing .bashrc file and now offers to create a backup into the backup folder. Um, it's not required in the initial installation, so I select no. And we can already select the profile. I will select hyperland with space and again Qtile with space and I can confirm the selection with return. Now the script asks me which version of Hyperland I want to install. And you have two options. The first option is the default Hyperland package. This is the latest official release. Or you can install the latest source, the latest compiled source code from Hyperland Git. I have good experiences just by selecting the default package Hyperland.
And now I the script asked me how to proceed with the rest of the packages. Um, I always suggest to reinstall all existing packages. So not just looking for new packages, just reinstall everything from scratch again, then you are on the safe side. That's why I confirm reinstall all packages with return. And the installation has started. Chromium, the Noto fonts, the Papyrus icon theme, Python, and so on will be now installed. And these are packages that are required for Hyperland and Qtile. So general packages. Just give the script a bit time and relax. The rest is happening in the background. The packages for Hyperlint will be installed now. And now the Qtile installation has started. And PyWall will be installed now. And wallpapers. Perfect. Now we can download my wallpaper package from my repository. I confirm this with yes, because I want to have it. Downloads will wallpapers have been installed successfully. Great. Display manager. All right. So Hyperland normally recommend to log in to start Hyperland from the terminal with TTY with the command Hyperland. But I made good experiences with the Display Manager SDDM. And now you can install that Display Manager by selecting Install SDDM Git. SDDM has been installed successfully. And now the script has detected that I run the installer individual machine and it offers to set some environment variables to improve the performance later on in Hyperland. I confirm this with yes. Yeah, and I also install the QEMO guest agent. So this enables me to copy from the host into the guest and back. Keyboard. Now we need to set up the keyboard layout. The default layout is US. I will change this by selecting change. I enter DE for the German keyboard layout, I confirm with return. And now you see that the keyboard layout is set to DE and I can proceed. So now we come to the point where the configurations from the dot files will be copied into the final folder in the, the final destination dot files. And I confirm this with yes. This is done. And I also want to use the .bash rc file that is chipped with the dot .files. I confirm this with yes. And that's it, done. The installation of the dot .files has been completed and I will reboot now the system with reboot. System is booting up. And what we should see is now SDDM here is SDDM with a nice wallpaper in the background and I can start Hyperlint. Hyperlint is selected in the session with my password and return. And here is Hyperlint. Installed successfully and all modules are up and running. You see already that this is a relatively low screen resolution, but this can be changed with the setting script. Just click here on that wheel and the setting script pops up and starts. And in system monitor, there are some configurations already available. And I select here 1920 to 1080 conf and I execute it. And now I have the required screen resolution implemented and the rest should work fine. With super key return, I can open a terminal and another terminal. Everything should work fine. And as said, you can customize your Hyperlint installation even more with the setting script. 
Okay, let's see if Qtile is also working. I log out, select the exit, I come back to SDDM, and now I select here Qtile, and I also log in here, and here is Qtile. Also up and running, I can change the wallpaper with super key shift w and i have another wallpaper with super key return now the same key bindings are also working here very well if you want to change the screen resolution in qtile you can open you can cd into the dot files folder qtile and open here with vim the auto start dot sh and you can, for example, here enable that screen resolution. Let's log out. Log in again into Qtile. And you see now you have the right screen resolution implemented. And also Thuna, the file manager, works fine. And when you click here on the browser icon, the browser comes up. You can select a wallpaper and also Qtile is working fine. Let's log out again and log into Hyperlint again. And also Hyperlint is still running and is now using the wallpaper from Qtile. And also here you can select here and switch to another wallpaper very nice. You have Thuna, you have Chromium available. So also Hyperland is running fine. And that's it. Hyperland and Qtile installed with my dot files on your computer. Please note that the performance of Hyperland in a virtual machine is very low. That's why, of course, at the end, if the testing is done in a virtual machine, I recommend to install Hyperland and Qtile with my dot files on real hardware on bare metal. I hope you enjoyed that video. Have a lot of fun with that configuration and see you next time.